Mats Madhu. We are the children, we are the children, the children of God. Tam Kam Kam. We change our world, we have what it takes to do it smart and make it smart. Welcome to our world, Smart Do. Hello, great four peoples. How are you? I hope you are fine and I'm fine too. So welcome to today's lesson. Today we are going to look at volume. We looked at mass in the previous lesson. So today we are, I want us to look at volume. So what is volume? Volume is defined as the amount of space that is occupied by a cube or a cuboid. So we have something we call a cube and a cuboid. How do we identify cubes and cuboids as we work out volume? How do we identify a cube and a cuboid? We are going to start with uh, one uh, here. With me here, I have a cube. So, we say that we have a square and a rectangle. A square and a rectangle. We said what is a square? A square is a figure which has all sides equal. A square is a figure which has all sides equal. We use this mark to show that the sides are equal. So, a, a cube is made up of six faces which are equal. One side of a, of a cube is called a face. One side, that is one side of a cube. For example, with me here, I have a cube. This is a cube. It is a cube. You can see it is a cube. One face of the cube, this side, is what we are calling a face. It's called a, a face. One side of the cube is called a face. And we say, where two faces meet, where two faces meet, we call that one an edge. We call that one an edge. So, a cube is a figure which has all sides equal. So, uh, all faces are equal. That is what we call a cube. This is a cube. This is not what we call a cube. I'm talking about the edge. An edge is where this face on this side and this face on this side, they are meeting along this line here. So this line is what we are calling the edge. So how many edges does a cube has? Uh, when you look at a cube, let me uh, write it clearly. We are identifying uh, cubes and cuboid. A cube, we say that it has how many faces? I said one side of a cube is what we call a face. So how many faces does a cuboid have? A cube has, so let us count. We have one on this side, two on this side, three and Four, then we have five and this other side six. So a cube has one at the bottom, two on this side, three, four, five on this side and six on this side. What am I counting? I'm counting the faces. So a cube has six faces. A cube has six Faces. This is in the case it is closed. Sometimes you can get a cube which is a cube which is open. So how many edges does it has? Does it have? I say that edges are lines where two faces meet. So this face and this face they meet along this edge. So these uh, lines which are here are what we call face, uh, edges. So how many edges does a cube have? We start with the this one here. We have one, two. 3, 4, then we have this one on top, 5, 6, 7, 8, then we have the ones below, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So a cube has 12 edges. A cube has 12 edges. Another property of a cube has all faces, all faces of a cuboid are equal. Uh, are equal. All cuboids of all faces of a cube are equal. 
That means this face on this on this part is equal to this face. It is also equal to this face. It is also equal to this face. All faces are equal. So it has a uh, twelve edges. Six faces as twelve edges, and all faces are equal. And it has six faces which are equal. Let us look at a cuboid. Let us look at a cuboid. This was a cube. So with me here, I still have a cuboid. This is a cuboid. It is uh, just rectangular faces and other uh, rectangular faces. So just like a cube, how many faces does a cuboid have? So it has one, two, three, four. We are counting the number of faces. Then we have five on this side and six on this side. So a cuboid has six faces, just like a square has six faces. How many edges does a cuboid have? What are edges? Edges, we said that is where two or more, uh, where two faces meet. Face number four and the face number three, face number four and face number three, they meet along this edge here. This line here is what we are calling edges. So how many edges does a cuboid have? We have one, two, three, four, those are the long edges, then five, six, seven, eight, and on the other side, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So just like a cube, it has twelve edges. Are all faces equal? No. This face is not equal to this face. When we look at this other uh, box here, this, uh, this packet is a cuboid. This packet is a cuboid. This face on this side is equal to this face on this other side. This face at the back is equal to this face on this part. The face at the top is equal to the face at the bottom. So we say that in a cuboid, opposite, opposite faces are equal. That is what differentiates a cuboid from a cube. Opposite faces are equal. In a cube, all faces are equal. Face number 5 is equal to face number 4, which is equal to face number 6. It is equal to face number 3, and it is also equal to face number 1. That is in a cube. All faces in a cube are equal. But a cuboid, opposite face, that means this face facing you, and this other face facing me, this face on this side and this face on this side, they are equal. This face on this side and this face on the other side, they are equal. The face on top and the face on the bottom, they are equal. That is why we say opposite. Opposite means this one and the other one on the other side. For example, if I'm standing here and another person is standing here, you see this person is standing opposite, uh, the other opposite side of me. So we say in a cuboid, opposite uh, sides or opposite faces are equal. So those are the uh, properties of cubes and cuboids. That is how we differentiate cubes and cuboids. I say that a cube has six faces when it is closed, and all faces are equal. It has 12 edges. A cuboid has six faces and 12 edges, but the opposite faces are equal. Thank you. Raise, raise Lazarus in front of them. In front, in front of them, so that they may believe. So it was a decision that Jesus made to bring back Lazarus in front of everybody by performing the miracle in front of everybody so that they could believe. So therefore, there are many situations that we read in the Bible whereby different people made different decisions depending on the factor and the situation they were in. So therefore even us, as we move on in life, it is important that we learn how to make good decisions. We come up with good decisions so that what we decide to do does not affect us in the future or in the present that we are living. So let's always ask God to guide us and help us do what is right. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good time. Bye-bye. Uh, and uh, what would befall him in case he did anything wrong? So therefore, 
when we are faced with a, a tough situations, it is always wise to choose the correct thing. However much pressure might be on us, it is always important that we choose what is right before God. And once you do that, God will always be with you. As we read our father on about Joseph, God was there with him throughout his stay even in prison. And God finally made him a very important person. So therefore, let's always be assertive in what you say. But remember, as you are being assertive, you must do it in a manner that is honest and is not disrespectful to the others. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good time. Bye-bye. Start from the little side. Any number that remains, convert it to decilitas, multiply by 10 to convert to decilitas. After converting, remember to add this 8 here. Then after adding 8, you work out now, uh, 5 divided by 48, you get 9 times, you find that you go 9 times because of 45. Subtract uh, from 48, you, you get 3. So these are 3 decilitas. Convert those 3 decilitas to milliliters by multiplying by 100. Then after multiply whatever you are getting, add the 25, uh, the 25 which was on the milliliters side, so that you get 325. That is now what we've done on this side. We have divided 325 milliliters divided by 5 to get 65. And that is how we work out multiplication and division. Thank you.